Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else that we find interesting. I am Vin Stone, that is Pedro Mateas, and everyone watching us live on Twitch after the fact. Thanks for doing that. Chiming in, and um, yeah, pretty big show this week. Pretty big show for two people, Pedro. Yes. <laughs> Looks like we're down at Jill. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, she will return when she uh, is, uh, you know, not dealing with California so fires. Got the black lung, <laughs> Faza. <laughs> yeah, no, the air quality in uh, California is not doing great. So, Jill, uh, yeah, no, focus on your health. It it's was, cool. It, it was truly it. a delightful experience to watch in real time. It was like, yo, yo, I'm sick, man. I was like, in three, two. There's Pedro in the show notes. I'm like, there he is. That's motivation. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, so I suppose I might as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been going on? What's new? We had a fun experience on um, Saturday. If you go back and watch uh, Saturday's Linux Teamcast Weekly, you'll notice that uh, Pedro and Jordan are very cinematic. Not not choppy video, but not, not our normal <laughs> fluid selves, you know. Mm-mm. <laughs> Jetsy bit us. It did. And I was like, we've just been using standard Jetsy service. And in the past, we've established like rainbow bridges and set up our own Jitsi instances. But it just got to where Jitsi.org was reliable enough to never have any problems with it. This was not Until the case last Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh oh. Then we went to, like, okay, we'll just use Discord. Man, Discord video. It's not fugly, but it's extremely low frame rate. What is that? Like, it had to have been like 15, maybe? It, it was probably under 15, too, because that was not... Because smooth 15, if you can get the frame times in and around the same, mm -hmm. there's a lot of leeway because 15, it looks okay. That was lower than 15. That had to be lower than 15. <laughs> Audio listeners, go back and watch that. So, uh... Jordan does the natural thing in the pre-show. He starts deploying a Jitsi server to see if he could, mm -hmm. just to challenge himself. He's like, hey, can I get one up and running? Didn't make it in time. We also learned about uh, Discord Nitro. Because <laughs> can we improve this? Mm -hmm. Can can I throw money at Discord and get better video? <laughs> we would all have to throw money, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're back on Jitsi. But not that Jitsi because not, we have double complete Jitsi servers now. Jordan Ooh. has deployed one in um, the EU, and I've spooled up one that we're running on right now in uh, New York. I thought New York was a nice little place between Canada and Torontosville, Athens, and uh, Britannia. It, it, About as close as you're going to get, <laughs> unless it, you want to have an island in the middle of the ocean just with a server. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day, but... <laughs> I would have played around with it. You know, I didn't use the Docker container. I just rolled it out on Debian 10. I'm not going to name uh, the service I'm using, but I will say this service was, it's a very, very popular one. Also very, very thirsty because I thought about getting this set up. Um, when did I roll this out? Maybe like Tuesday. So it had been like Monday afternoon. I created an account. I'm like, all right, I'll get around to it. Day after that, whatever. It's not a big deal. It's rolling out Jitsi, you know, it's, not a lamp stack, but an Nginx stack, as Pedro would say. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> and uh, if you've ever deployed Jitsi, it's just a script you run then, and it's going to get 80% of the stuff set up for you. Then you got to go through CertBot and do all the other fun stuff. And I, I, I was definitely King Shark moment trying to remember. It was like, C name, A name. Okay, let's get all that pointed around. But before I got back, to actually log into the site to spool up the instance, I'd already been contacted by the company. <laughs> I've been contacted by the company, Pedro. This was not generic spam. Mm -hmm. This was, hey, Vin, I work with most of the streamers on our platform. I would like to schedule a time, so maybe we could get together and discuss some migration. <laughs> <laughs> they did a background check on you. <laughs> they, <laughs> this, yeah. Like, oh, that's kind of flattering. I wrote him back. I'm like, listen, then I'm just going to be 
setting up Jitsi. It's not anything big. It's more for redundancy than anything else. I didn't want to disappoint. But yeah, that's been my adventures. Pedro, I heard you got a Firewire card. I did. You Apparently hipster. it's the wrong one. Hipster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I saw it because it was on eBay. I was like, ooh, five pounds. Okay, I, I can burn the five pounds. And apparently I have. Because are you, apparently this Wait, are you so desperate one, to get audio working on Linux? Yes, yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm resorting to 90s technology. Uh, so <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, apparently this one has the um, Via oh, chip yeah. uh, on it and the, uh, not the uh, TI one, Ven has uh, schooled me now. I didn't but school yeah, you. No. I just said, hey, look, I got 15 <laughs> years of people saying this is the right chip. <laughs> fair okay but yeah no the thing that got me was besides the crunchy state that the uh, the box is in it is a generic box that they use for all of the uh, pci pci express cards they Hold use it them up, for <laughs> it's just got pictures of all the uh, different models okay. you may get inside the one box like your serial adapters, your parallel adapters, your USB 3s or 2s, uh, your uh, serial ATA 3s, your uh, Ethernet NICs. What about RJ12? Uh, Come on, we need that PCIe. No RJ12. Turns out that they do make PCIe by one modems. They do, Real but this, one, uh, this yeah. box does not include those. Uh, and, uh, of course, Firewire uh, 1394B. Yes. So, yeah, it is. Um, oh, it was here's the, wrong the thing. One. Um, <laughs> if you're going to be ordering a card, is it Firewire 400 adapter? Which one's that? Is that the big one or the small one? Is big one. The big one? Yeah. Okay. Big one. Good. <laughs> Most audio interfaces have that on it. Well. Yes. We're all caught up. You hipster with your firewire. Um, <laughs> I've out hipstered you, man. All the audio on this show is being processed through a PCI card. True story. True story. In an A4 yeah. motherboard. So wrap your <laughs> mind around that. Let's start off with an announcement from Raja yesterday. It was yesterday, right? Yesterday morning. Uh -huh. Yesterday, well, yes, it was the day before for me, but yesterday morning for you, yes. Time traveling, <laughs> man. That's why I got out of that country. Um, <laughs> I live in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Intel has finally announced their ARC, which was the, what were they just calling it? The Z before this? XZ, yeah, or Z or, uh, look, the pronunciation is still up for grabs at this point. It was an X and an E. Uh, that's it. <laughs> well, I think Arc is kind of like their, you know, Centrino platform, right? Like, oh, it's all together under this one brand mm -hmm. name. But you got to admit, Intel's walking into the most favorable GPU markets in the history of ever right now. If they can execute on this, you know, seriously, like the Z, their discrete GPU solution will have um, market share by the end of this if they can just get them out okay. there. So they are planning to launch sometime between January and March of 2022, which that's a good thing to point out. And the Arc Graphics Products, the platform, gaming first, codename Alchemist SOCs, they're going to be available not only in desktops, but also in notebooks. But Pedro, I'm burying the lead. <laughs> are you now? <laughs> I, yes, sir. I, I am... Not telling you the best part about this. This is the best part. The best part about this announcement? $53 shirts, baby. <laughs> Ooh, no. Come on, yeah. look at it. That's 53.65 of a poorly rendered arc thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm, yeah, no. <laughs> See, besides, you know, having to pay Pedro, to advertise says, for Let's Intel. play on the back now. How much would you pay? <laughs> I want someone to make a parody shirt uh, of that that says let's something else. <laughs> but it comes in 5XL. <laughs> of course it does. They know their target demographic. Uh, but yeah, it is... No, the, the, the simple fact of having to pay to advertise for a company is bad enough as it is. You'd be doing that for Intel. Okay. Pedro, do you want to get a little depressed though? <laughs> a little bit right at the beginning of the show not too much sure all right <laughs> all right i'm gonna tell you this check this out it's currently in back order uh, 
Uh, yeah, no, as if I had any fate left in humanity. Uh, no, yeah, no, we're, we're Sold good. Out. Dad. <laughs> don't, just don't. So one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up right at the beginning of the show is this, this is the chosen one. This is Anakin, man. Um, Intel walking in. Intel's been really good about open source drivers, too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And a discreet, legitimate player three. Now that 3D effects has decided that, that was just a prank, bro. Yeah, we've had the uh, old, just player one and player two, AMD and and Nvidia. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I want to believe so. If you hard. wanted to do more than gaming, yes, Nvidia. <laughs> I want it. I want it to be a thing. I want it to be. I want Intel to execute the way I know Intel executes, and that's dirty. I want them to roll out the massive uh, fab capacity that they do have, because they still have their own fab, even if they're now uh, also working with TSMC. But they have a pretty big fab. They have been providing tons of processors. Okay, 14 nanometer processors, but tons of them every single year for however many years that bulldozer was out so they have the capacity and now is a very good time because yes the all the other gpus are effectively sold out or at a massive markup and everyone wants a player three and yeah to your point earlier it is okay let's be real it's not everybody wants player three people just want video cards man (laughs) Yes, that is the immediate need, but I, everyone I think right now who t- has ever paid attention to this uh, part of the industry I mean, when, when is you going say like, player we three, need someone else, player please three, someone you, else. You can say that, but I can give you the new GPU and you're like, where did that come from? Fourth layer of Tartarus. Cool. <laughs> Not asking any questions. <laughs> yes, the immediate need, absolutely. And people just want GPUs. But um, I hope that the Intel GPUs, uh, the videos that they have on their website, aren't the demonstration of the encoding capabilities How of dare. the new GPUs. How dare. <laughs> because that looks a bit crunchy. You Not played that all. video earlier. And it's like, that, that, that's crunchy. That, that. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't look very good. Yeah, no, there's a lot of uh, encoding artifacting going on, uh, both the gameplay one and the uh, the other one, that render that they did. It is not good. It, it, it Yeah, maybe it's, uh, I, I even thought, maybe it's Firefox. I'll try Chrome, I'll try Vivaldi, I'll try all the other browsers. Bright Cove player. Nope. Very, very... Um, well, I mean, very we're seeing all it, the browsers. It, it, it can run <laughs> Crisis, and we saw it playing Metro Exodus. I'm not going to mm-hmm. throw him under the bus because of that, because I, Ben, we were, the game we reviewed Saturday, talk about encoding, like, oh, yeah, so yes. let, let's just take <laughs> Those that. Those cutscenes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's never a good thing, but uh, Intel, Deliver. There's also a contest, I think, if you send them questions or something, which I absolutely did because I want one. I want to live that dream because uh, Raja has even come out and said in an interview, I was like, hey, we're going to bring something that's going to be competitive against NV Encode with the compute side. I look forward to QuickSync too. I'll, I'll be happy to see what they can do. I will. Yes. So that's good news. This is the bad news. Ah, uh, yeah. NB Miner 3.9 is out and it unlocks 70% of 30 series mining performance for your <laughs> NVIDIA cards. If you need to mine that Ethereum, no more pesky LHR getting in the way of your mining operation. Well, you don't seem excited, Pedro. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just waiting for people to pick up that phone because I freaking called it. <laughs> With NVIDIA saying, oh, no, it's unhackable. No one's going to find a way around this. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. You are our only hope, Endel. Uh (laughs) I saw this. I just wanted to throw it in, give a quick mention because of that reaction, Pedro, and a lot of you are going to have, like, really? (laughs) Because... You know, NVIDIA's definitely been rolling out the LHR, but I, I've not seen the supply show up 
on the NVIDIA side that he's like, hey, man, things are good again. I'm like, no, it's not. I Where's my 3060? It doesn't exist. That Yeah, that's the thing. The 3060 was the one, the first one that was supposed to have that. And then they released or uh, leaked the driver that uh, removed any kind of um, low hash rate that it may have had. Mm-hmm. And it was just full on. Um, yeah, it had the fully unlocked hash rate. And the uh, then it was the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti that were supposed to be the saving grace, you know. But the then ones again, that came with that out, again, of the, out of the factory. This is only doing plus or minus seventy <laughs> percent. So you got to play that game. This this is even it helps, but you you have to make the financials work. Yes, in order to mine it, it that, is seventy percent ish according yeah. to the. Um, Nebotech admin, if mm. that's his real name. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? I thought we'd mention everyone. Don't get your hopes up. Or there's your answer to a lot of like, why are the cards still out of stock? A, NVIDIA, uh, and even AMD. They, Dogecoin. What about, it's Dogecoin. Um, <laughs> what about that new AMD card? Have you heard anything about that? I saw all the uh, um, typical run of uh, tech reviewers. It's like, this is a Y card. I'm like, what? Why would you, yes, why would it, you buy it, this? That seems... That seems to be the um, general consensus because for the price, because it is a 380 MSRP card that performs about on par with the 3060. Mm. So does it, yeah. have, does it have 12 <laughs> gigs of RAM? No, it has eight. Does it cost less than 3060? Uh, it, the MSRP it costs a bit more actual uh-huh. market price it's about the same <laughs> are they both completely out of stock so none of that matters <laughs> yep alright good to know good to know <laughs> Debian had a birthday it did Debian turned 28 years old this week 1993 I did the maths for you um, <laughs> Really happy to see that. But on top of that, Bullseye is finally out. That's our latest distribution. That's right. Debian stale, stale no longer, but give it two years <laughs> until the next one rolls around, man. So 28 years of the best Linux distribution ever created because that happens just to be the one I'm running currently. Subject to change. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, angry comments successfully done. <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I've been tracking Bullseye on pretty much every box in this studio, except for like the uh, guest after shows and box for the last six months. Have run into any weird issues? No major ones, I should say. One weird one is on Threadbooper. I just cannot get uh, Wine32 to install. This is this is like one of those random things that bugs me because it's got some weird depth issues with, um, what was it? Uh Man, don't you love it when you're doing your show? Brains is like, I'm out. Um, Happens a lot. <laughs> this, what's the startup system that we all hate? That's, uh, system D? Yes. System D, 32-bit <laughs> system D issue. But the package kind of, you know what? I'm not touching that. Also, don't need Wine32. <laughs> but that's how it rolled. Uh, it is going to be shipping kernel 5.10, updated packages. And I mean, it's Debian. If you're installing it, you know what you're doing. Probably like me, you're setting up your own custom kernel, you're installing, compiling anything that you want. And uh, yeah, so Pedro, you run uh, Debian Lite. Uh, I, yes, <laughs> on this box, I'm running KDE Neon, uh, which is Ubuntu without a lot of the cruft. Debian Lite uh, with a neon body kit. Yes, <laughs> but I am actually running Debian proper on the uh, ThinkPad T42.5 which is the housing of a T42 with the innards of a T43. Um, And I've been running Bullseye proper on that one for a long time now. That's why I was surprised. Oh, it wasn't out yet? Because I've been running that for a while now. So, okay. (laughs) Do you just have a disconnect on how that works with Debian? (laughs) Uh, yeah no that's the thing. uh, Debian is very much on a secondary machine so I don't really keep up to date. The way um, in, with the, uh, <laughs> unlike a lot of distributions, you, you you track different versions. Now you can track what I've been doing. I'd say I've been running Debian 11 for six months. What I've really been doing is running Debian testing. So if you have a Debian testing and eventually testing will become into a, you know, a code name or whatever, then that just means that you'll get updates until that version's done. Then that repo will switch over to just being that version. 
but you can go back to testing. Like I can go back to testing now when I'll start getting the updates to whatever's going to be. And there's testing, then there's unstable if you want to YOLO it. Like seriously, you can- That's what Ubuntu is based off of. (laughs) uh, Undead. Untested and, uh, but I mean, that's effectively tracking like arch level updates. Yes. It's that recent. <laughs> that's dealing with all the breakage. <laughs> it doesn't break that often, but it's out there. <laughs> Install it. It's great. Debian, as I've said before, and I've been quoted, uh, Debian, it's a good kind of boring. If you need a system to do work, to get S done, and I mean stuff, people, to get stuff done, <laughs> Debian's going to be there. No surprises from now for the next couple of years. Security updates, maybe a few version bumps, but you know, the system's going to come on when I need it to. Yep. Yeah. And, and I don't, I, that that is the point you want to be at. <laughs> it's awesome. It's great. <laughs> Which is part of also why I'm running KDE Neon. Besides being Ubuntu without a lot of the cruft, like a lot. Go uh, go on this or watch and put like regular Ubuntu or Kubuntu. Uh, versus uh, KDE Neon and see the amount of packages that KDE Neon is missing, uh, comparatively speaking, because it has quite a few. Uh, And it only tracks the LTSs. So I'm technically running 2004. (laughs) Boring, but it works. You're running an older system than I am. Yes. (laughs) Again, the the Debian 11 just came out. I'm going to have to wait till 2022. Uh, to get an update? <laughs> I don't know, man. Why, why don't you just put, like, Rocky on there? Dun, I have dun, dun, one dun, of the dun, uh, laptops dun. is running. Rocky. <laughs> uh, I, I was I was in the, on the side. It's like, okay, I got to have one of, of either uh, Alma Linux or uh, Rocky Linux running on uh, the one laptop that didn't have uh, Linux on it. Mm-hmm. E- except for the one that's running Haiku. But that's different. <laughs> now I'm just thinking, is there a Linux uh, PCM driver for the um, internal speaker? Because if I put Rocky on a box, I'm going it, to, it, it's, it's doing the Rocky theme song when it's launching the desktop. <laughs> it does. In fact, if you have Debian installed, it, guess what it loads out of the box? Okay. I, since I know with Debian, <laughs> regular Debian, go ahead and tell me. What does it load out of the box? Because it doesn't load anything out of the box as you don't click on the check marks. Yes, if you take the uh, the big check mark that says desktop, uh, why it also would you loads do that? Because it saves time. The- Apparently not, because you're going to tell me that you have to remove things. <laughs> yes, remove the uh, PCM speaker module, because otherwise, instead of hearing like the ding if you have sound effects enabled, it actually beeps the sound PC speaker. <laughs> I have that enabled on both of the optiplexes, like these boxes, because I can alt F4 and when I hear beep, I know I'm in the right spot. I can just hit right twice and hit it without having the monitors on. I learned that on the T42 and a half because I was typing in the terminal and I went tab to autocomplete and it beeped at me. It's like, what? What? (laughs) What are you trying to say? Where's Timmy? It's like I hit tab again, beep. Okay, we're getting rid of that. <laughs> so what about Thunderbird? What about oh, Thunderbird? Oh, yes. There is a new version of Thunderbird, and uh, there it's not being released with the exact same cadence as Firefox is, but it is every now and then getting a few updates, and version 91 basically tracks uh, with Firefox 91. Uh, the big difference here, since we're moving up from 78 to 91, is multi-process rendering or multi-process mode or whatever you want to call it. Multi-threading. So you don't have the one thread that's doing everything. Which is uh, just very welcome, <laughs> let's say. And the, um, the other thing that kind of jumped out at me was proper support for .ics. Hey, it's got support files. for Matrix. Uh, the kids love that. It does. Uh, if you have, if you use the chat functionality in a uh, Thunderbird, you, you have some beta level Matrix uh, compliance right now. The people who use Matrix, please do let me know how that works. I don't know. I don't use it, but it is uh, the .ics files and the WebCal protocol. If you have a link on a website for any reason that it wants to add stuff to your calendar. 
and you want that kind of functionality, you absolutely can. Uh, so just click on it and Thunderbird will go, oh, got a link here. And the, uh, there was another, uh, oh, the, um, uh, if you have your Outlook contacts synced with the Outlook online, if you add your Outlook account to, uh, Thunder Chicken now, it actually pulls your contacts down. Which is crazy. <laughs> Sorcery. I don't Why trust did it, it take so long? <laughs> a couple of other things. They finally updated the IRC server to Libra Dutch. Huh? That's the thing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of brilliant. I'm really happy to see multi thread support mm -hmm. <laughs> for like, look, I, uh, how many years did I spend on this show? Really? I'm like, why do you take so long to start up? And that's a real complaint when you're on a thread ripper going, Really? <laughs> ah there it goes and um between that another thing i'd like to i might install it just to play around with this new version because the reason i pieced out on um thunderbird was the high dpi support they updated the theme to the point where it supported high dpi and i'd still go in there and try to set everything up because i don't run a mail client full screen i have a 43 inch monitor that's a bit excessive i like to run things in one you know in windows and it was jacked up to the point where like the icons and the names were all rub running together. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. Why is this a problem? Mm -hmm. And I went to the extensions and searched the extensions. And yes, oh, look, somebody has created an extension just to fix this problem. And it's kind of popular. Stuff like that. <laughs> Usability issues. That that was the like, you know what? I'm going to start using evolution. I've been using evolution ever since. Um, I don't know. What do you think of evolution? You ever used it? Uh, I tried using it back in the day, uh, it, but apparently it was a bad time because it was during that lull in the development of evolution mm. that it wasn't evolving at all because there were no developers. One of the and things so I'll say about evolution, though, dude, chicken. try to uh, look at the hack job you have to do to tell evolution not to use Firefox to open links. Mm -hmm. To tell it to use Chrome. <laughs> That's an afternoon you're going to be spending doing things. And uh, it, it is infinitely easier just to right click, copy link, and uh, go up to Chrome. So I, it's not a perfect solution, but I'll definitely go back and play with it. Oh, uh, speaking of Exchange, uh, Arthur and brought up uh, the fact that Exchange is a bit iffy on Thunder Chicken. There is an extension that you can uh, put on Thunder Chicken that lets you uh, sync your in house Exchange, but you have to pay for it. <laughs> It has in-app payments, that particular extension. <laughs> then pay for it. <laughs> yeah, if you really want to, that's an option. <laughs> I, if you want to wind me up real quick, uh, how many times have you had, I don't know, I have this argument some of the times because people will ask, oh, what are you using for audio XYZ plugin-wise? And like, oh, I'm using this from Overtone or ACM. I'm like, but you have to pay for that. It, well, they don't say that. What they say is that's not open source. Like, uh, <laughs> no. Then it'll be, and that costs money. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not in keeping with spirit with Linux. <laughs> that's usually what I knew with them. <laughs> I yeah, don't know. I, I never you, actually tried what, any what, of the paid extensions, to be fair. But What, uh, what do you think the that, ratio is of, like, <laughs> true, like, you know... Full, full bore, um, floss people versus cheapskates. Because uh, you got to remember, a lot of the open source people are on Windows. Because mm -hmm. open source uh, to them equals, cheap, equals uh, free. Yeah. Between those two, uh, there's a lot more cheapskates than uh, there are the staunch uh, Zalmanites or whatever you want to call them. Mm. Um, I bring this up. I see this most commonly with Adorm. Adorm ships with effectively every Linux distribution and people are more than happy to compile it. You got to pay for it on windows. You can, the source code is still available. You can compile it on windows, but nobody makes binaries. So you got to like, <laughs> subscribe for a dollar a month. <sighs> and the amount of if times it's the thing you use a lot. No, yeah. Pedro, no, <laughs> Pedro. The amount of, just go to the outdoor forums and read through individual <laughs> posts of people just getting unhinged. Like, what is wrong with this? This is 
bro, I can't believe you're making people pay for it. Like, man, come on. Yeah, the the sense of entitlement. That too is uh, very much in the minority, especially the very, very vocal minority. But you see that with everything. Remember Hollow Knight? <laughs> there was that. So, Gideon Live 21.08. Yeah, that works. It's out. It's the thing. What's Katie and Live, Pedro? I heard it's, uh, you make make the uh, YouTube videos with him. You can. It, it is a video editor that is built on the KDE framework. So if you already have the kitchen sink <laughs> trademark installed. Incorrect, Pedro uh, Mateus. Can- app images. They're available. Have been. That's what you use. <laughs> I use... Katie and Live each and every week to make our credits have been for a long time. Use the right tool for the job. Uh, this latest version's got a bunch of neat stuff in it. Performance, speed bumps, masking effects, UI improvements, and general bug fixes. Kind of a gang of those at the end. But I downloaded the app image because I didn't want to install the KDE Kitchen Sink. I'm like, all right, hey, I just want to play with it. App image works great. And um, everything was fine. I will say for the love of baby flying spaghetti monster, auto add audio tracks. That drives me insane each and every week when i go to drag the recorded video over to uh make the credits and i have to manually add audio tracks each and every week you can pick it up i can choose a a preset i do two different sets yeah it shouldn't do that pedro you you can identify the amount of tracks that too no but i mean no no pedro you... no pedro there's no that too that's how you do it when i drag media source mm. in there you need to auto add the amount of audio tracks because i have different sizes at different times i don't yes. want to have multiple templates laid out that's the thing i could at least remember the last time you were there it's like oh you had nine tracks here last time so there you go nine tracks I, I don't know. <laughs> auto add the audio please pretty please that's all i'm asking it's not too much but um what else do we have all right i did notice uh they do have the it's not new but the experimental nv encode if you get an nvd code is a step in the right direction for uh, rendering your videos on it's going to speed things up i was getting uh with x265 i was getting about 145 150 frames per second at 1080p 60 again rendering out h265 using nv encode so I was happy with that. It's uh, still quite a bit off from DaVinci, but that's definitely in the right. And, you know, because it's just leveraging NV encode. It's not leveraging compute, you know, C plus G. Um, DaVinci is like 230, 260, depending. But, I mean, take a look at that if you're doing rendering and you're like, I don't want to deal with a closed source or anything like that. Katie and Live's got you covered. I mean, it's really mm-hmm. shaped up, turned into a legitimate nonlinear video editor. One thing I will say that the default decay time on the audio meters that pop up, those should come with a seizure warning because <laughs> they're not very useful as audio meters. They're just lights that ramp, flash, and play. Like, ah, geez. <laughs> <laughs> That's how quick the, the decay is. On them. Like, it just lights up, <laughs> blinks. <laughs> which is very entertaining when you have like 12 to 13 audio tracks lined up and it's like, whoa, okay. (laughs) That is a thing. It's available on everything. Just download the app image, play with it. It works. It's stable. I've rendered uh, a couple of credits out with it. No problems whatsoever. Uh, But Pedro, Pine's got a new device that, I don't know. Are you interested in it or you're just like, yeah, I might as well. I got pine everything else. Pine boy. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the announcement and I'm like, I don't have anything with an e-ink display. So, eh, you know, might as well. And then I looked at the big bold line in the TLDR that says available this year for three ninety nine, And I said to myself, you know what? I can just buy a teeny tiny little e-ink display for the Raspberry Pi <laughs> because that pine note, it looks good. I'm not going to lie. It looks very, very good. And yes, I did have an interest in it. More so to play around with, but I'm pretty sure the moment Nori saw me playing around with it, she'd go, <gasps> can I have? Uh, so yeah, the <laughs> the um, the interest uh, severely, severely dwindled after I saw the price tag, because that is very much my cutoff point for everything IT related. So... 
considering I'd have to pay tax on top of it and shipping. Uh, no, just no. It looks good. I, I'm not going to lie. It looks very, very good. And for an e-ink tablet that size, at that, that that's going to uh, probably get a lot of people interested. It doesn't use the Rockchip uh, RK3399. Uh, it uses the 3566. And it has 128 gigabytes of EMMC flash. Why? I don't know, but it does. <laughs> uh, they, How about you, Ven? <laughs> I, I, I was checking to see if they've done an update to uh, something because the, the initial announcement, initial announcement made me go, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, just, just a tick, if you will, because it said <laughs> this e-ink device has a 60 hertz refresh rate. Like, I'm not saying that's impossible. That is most possible. But if you're doing 60 hertz, uh, your battery life's going to tank. It, at best, it's going to be like a good OLED. You know, you're not going to get the advantage. I even, you know, went and explained some of this in our Discord. Join our Discord. Uh, <laughs> OLED, well, not OLED, but e-ink doesn't need a charge to maintain an image or text. That's why you get... Fruit. It gets that charge and it's fine. It's good. And you can keep rocking and rolling. You don't need to keep constant charge to it. But if you're updating it 60 times a second, uh, yeah, that's going to drive down your battery life. But there's been an edit out of August 16th. They're like, wait a minute. Maybe we need to update. Uh, the previous version of this post lists the ink panels refresh rate at 60. Hmm. Well, this, this number needs much more contact. So it takes multiple <laughs> frames to display. Most images on an e-ink panel. Visual performance of the panel, uh, da 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 panels understands. We will be unable to make estimates of the panel's true performance and frame per Okay. Let me let me simplify. We apologize the missing. Don't nobody advertises the refresh rate of their e-ink because it's e-ink. Have you ever watched a YouTube video on e-ink? It's rough. <laughs> you can't watch it. It's just a smear of <laughs> ghosted images. <laughs> this is the perfect device for you, though, Pedro, because, you know, if you want to work remotely, work from home, it's e-ink, so you can be out in the park in the middle of a hot day with the sun beating down on you while you're SSH'd into something. <laughs> yes, I could. Or, you know, I could take the Pine Book, which uh, actually has a very nice screen. It's very bright. Well, it's like 400 something nits um, in the middle. Uh, down the edges, it starts to lose a little that bit pen of looks brightness. pretty good. It does. That, that's the thing that actually got me interested because if you're going to have a proper e ink, um, let's call it a tablet, um, you can, th that's what you're going to be using it for. Either note taking or drawing or the occasional like email reply that you can actually write your stuff down. Um, it, it's a very good idea. It's a very good idea. And as someone who lives with an illustrator, now graduated illustrator, finished university, whenever you see Nori, uh, give her a kudos because she actually did it. Uh, the, um, yeah, no, the, that would get a lot of use right here, especially with the Wacom panel, uh, the Wacom uh, panel, layer that they have in the screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then buy one. <laughs> it's too expensive. No, it's not. <laughs> you spent more money on dumber things. Such as? <laughs> See, that, that is like, you don't know about those things, face. <laughs> <laughs> because the last time I spent more money than that on anything IT related was before I bought the 970. Thanks, Nvidia. <laughs> you ins you instilled that hard cap on me. Pedro's poor purchasing <laughs> decisions are Nvidia's fault. <laughs> the nine seventy. You should have bought. Nvidia's you should have bought an AMD card. Why do you hate Linux? <laughs> <laughs> something, something streaming on Tuesdays. Tune you can, in. <laughs> you can do that. You, hey, man, listen. And once I get that web presenter HD, I'm not. I legitimately could. Yeah. Throw an if you have curtain. something else, either a dedicated uh, streaming box or a dedicated streaming computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just couldn't use Blender. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No kuda. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, e-ink's pretty neat. I got the original Kindle. I think it was like a Kindle. Like, 
little thing. It's got like some BS uh, cellular connection in it too. We're gonna get to Wikipedia. Oh, WhisperNet. Whatever <laughs> it is, man. I have it. Has, it lets you read Wikipedia. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> having had it out in probably six or seven years, guarantee you'd still get a charge. And um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I I'm not really hung up on the ink. Uh, that's neat. It's just reasons like the biggest problem with uh, that is also it's 2021. Tablet screens have gotten bright enough to where it's not like really an issue to be outside. Battery life's gotten good enough to where a tablet's going to run all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and prices have fallen enough to where my most recent tablet wasn't, I mean, it was $300 after tax, but come on. Yeah. And uh, the more things from, because this is a big post. It's one of the big uh, Pine announcements. Uh, if you have a Pinebook Pro, Vulcan is coming to the $33.99 in Mesa 21.2 along with open proper open gl uh 3.1 so that's very good that's very very good uh finally be able to actually leverage the four big cores that the thing has and actually do something with them um and it is a uh, bind time um wasp os has uh, some new apps and uh better memory management i still need to try it weren't you guys talking about in uh, yeah. discord about something about the touchpad <laughs> Oh yeah, the that that's a community developed fix, but it is the touchpad on the Pinebook Pro had a bit of a lag when you first started tapping on it, and only after a while would the cursor actually start moving, and that was messing with people, and it was not a good experience if you actually tried to use it for any precision work or any extended uh, amount of time. So the community got together, and they put a. They fix the firmware because, hey, wouldn't you know it? Uh, except for the SOC, everything in this laptop is up for grabs. So, <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, the community fixed the touchpad and it is a proper touchpad now. That fix has been out for a month, mm-hmm. probably a bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we have going on in the world of M1 and Linux? Ah. Oh. Azahi Linux, yes, they have a progress report for 2021, and they've uh, updated the uh, the kernel to 5.13. There's, um, it's Apple, so the GPU situation is always complicated, and with this one, they kind of made it uh, harder for anyone attempting to get Linux working on a thing that was not meant to ever <laughs> have Linux installed on it. You mean reverse and, engineering uh, that thing? Yes. <laughs> and they bring up the Nouveau comparison aptly so, because there's two kinds of uh, things going on with the GPU. You have the GPU proper that actually does all the rendering and um, all of the, basically, the hard stuff. That's what the GPU handles. And then you have the display controller, which is separate. Uh, and the display controller is the thing that actually puts stuff up on screen, be it uh, on the the screen for the uh, the MacBook or via the HDMI or DisplayPort or whatever they're using nowadays um, on the uh, the Mac Mini. So it is um, interesting. There's uh, two different people. Um, one of them is focused more on the GPU and basically their work is made a bit easier because there's been a lot of uh, GPU uh, reverse engineering already. Nufo, for example, that's the big one. And um, the other one is the display controller, which is new. It's, it never used to be separate, but it is now. So got to figure that out if you want to have proper accelerated frames show up on screen on time. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, the installer, they're working on the installer now. <laughs> I mean, I, I want an M1 powered mini, but it's going to be headless. There's just never going to be a situation to plug into anything. That's awesome work. I love that it's continuing on because that's a like real sustainable like setup, you know, for a modern Linux distribution on the M1. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> At this point, I'm curious, like the, the entire M1 architecture, I'm curious about it very much so because it's new. It, it's Apple basically going, oh, ARM. 
Mm-hmm. Let's do our own thing with that. And yeah, there's, there's you know, my opinion about uh, Apple aside, because my opinion is that they are, if not the worst, definitely one of uh, the worst corporations on the face of the earth. B- but their hardware engineers do interesting stuff. Oh, you're an Apple show. So, Apple show. <laughs> Jack be nimble, Jack be open. Yeah. Uh, Dax sent this in, dropped it in the show notes, so I want to give it a mention. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Decentralized Twitter. What do we think? Jack writes uh, in a little Twitter post, Twitter is funding a small independent team of up to five open source architects, engineers, and designers to develop an open and decentralized standard for social media. The goal is for Twitter to be ultimately a client for this standard. Hmm. I don't... It is a bold claim. (laughs) Uh, Okay. (laughs) Also kind of defeating the purpose, if we're honest. (laughs) Well, the name of the project's Blue Sky. You can head over there, blueskyweb.org, and, um, yeah, uh, I'm interested. They're hiring. So if you know Mm -hmm. anyone, uh, they have a Discord and all that fun stuff. So I immediately was thinking, you know, decentralization has always been a neat idea. I've always been a fan of it, but uh, I've never really seen it take off successfully with anything that was decentralized to be in like PeerTube or uh, Library or, you know, I think Matrix is doing a little better though, right? Doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, there's certainly a vocal fan base I was going to say like, how big it actually is. The six <laughs> people that use it are very shouty about it. Um, yes. <laughs> And you got to remember, Twitter was kind of open back in the day. You remember all the Twitter clients you could pick and choose from? And then they went to a token system and they got rid of the one that I was using. And I was very cranky about that when I had to start using the official Twitter client. Um, I use mm-hmm. Twitter daily. Well, I use TweetDeck daily for searching yes. for topics for this show and um, Linux Team Cast weekly. But, you know, I want to see decentralized social something work for once. This might have a good shot of doing it. Then again, like Twitter in its current form, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Um, I don't have any anger or like, grr, Twitter bad. Never really had that feel. But to me, Twitter is just like Reddit, man. It's what you make it. Not, I mean, social media is a reflection of what you're interested in. And um, some people, some people get really upset with that self-reflection. <laughs> <laughs> some people don't like what they see in the mirror mm. but it is yeah no i guess the way to make decentralized stuff work is by creating ironically enough a centralized client which seems to be what um blue sky here is trying to be that or it's a variant of uh, crystal meth cooked by one walter white <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have or to be... Or was it Sky Blue? I don't no, remember. No, no, that was Sky Lure. <laughs> no, that was his wife. <laughs> I was talking about the uh, street name for the stuff what Blue he was Sky, cooking. You mean Sky Lake? Sky... No, that's that's the Intel processor. <laughs> that's the Intel processor family. <laughs> We'll be keeping an eye on it, and it's definitely something to watch out for. But uh, a couple of quick plugs. Uh, we I do need to thank uh, our latest patron. We have a Patreon, Pedro. If people like we what we do, we pretty much give everything away for free. we got some bonuses for patrons, like um, an extra long version of this show. This is the middle. You don't get the pre-show or the post-show, but we do make that available on podcast and ad-free video formats uh, for our patrons, uh, along with a bunch of things, access to our Discord if you subscribe to us on that Twitch thing, you can also pop in our Discord, where I even have a live audio feed for these shows when we're live. I'll go ahead and drop that on. It's kind of brilliant, and you're helping us out, keeping us ad-free, live, independent, all that hotness. But that's patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. we got a bunch of different levels, and we thank you for your support. But we do have a new patron, Game Mo Tron has decided to help us out. That's kind of awesome. That's... That's kind of crazy <laughs> to think, you know, this uh, <laughs> raggedy bunch of people, the, what Ven basically drafted from Google Plus back in the day. You mean the biggest and baddest, <laughs> most technically advanced show, Linux show on the internet, that one? Yes. <laughs> You'd think, you know, 
uh, I'm just thinking back from, you know, I'm not very much involved with the technical side. So uh, as just someone who kind of shows up and speaks his mind, uh, occasionally drops a naughty word every now and then, even when he shouldn't. <laughs> I very much appreciate that um, people like us enough to think that, hey, let's make sure they keep doing it. Let's ensure that those bills get paid. Thank you. It's kind of neat. And, Very much um, appreciated. <laughs> you've definitely put up a situation where I'm not going to go broke doing it. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Um, thanks again. And uh, we do Game have other things. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you want to uh, check this out, you can send Pedro a piece of paper. Now, it's got to be attached to something, unfortunately. They won't yes. just send the piece of paper <laughs> with whatever you type out on it that Pedro will read. We asked. They're like, no, no, people would abuse that. They would. But go check our webzone, LinuxTeamCast.com, and there's a support button <laughs> where you can go creep on things that Pedro is planning on buying, like rainbow barf keyboards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not a mechanical keyboard, that one. It is, uh, that is precisely why it's there. It's uh, waiting for the end of the month. At the end of the month, I'll buy it. <laughs> I'm so glad this comes to stock. It's... <laughs> It's it's a one liter mug. That that that's it. This is <laughs> that's like why that's for, for the audio <laughs> listeners. This is like some type of proto horn mug that I'm like, okay, maybe if you're at a Ren Fair or something like that. Um, <laughs> it's one liter capacity. That that's what I'm getting out of that. <laughs> why don't you go for like a two liter capacity? Uh, because those aren't available on Amazon UK. I looked. <laughs> oh. Come on, it. <laughs> Get your guns working. Like, rawr. Always carry around a two liter. <laughs> I, I carry around laptops all the time. That's like a kilo and change for most of them. You stay home all the time. So now I just have more questions. <laughs> I carry them around. Sometimes, see that table back there? There's a lot of laptops that get put up on that table. Carry them around. He reaches back there. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did go into the kitchen. I did roll myself into the kitchen once, but there's a little lip on the door, so I don't do that very uh, often anymore. I quit doing that the one time I found myself in front of the fridge. <laughs> yeah, no, that lip, it got in the way. It's like, mm, mm, this is not easy. So, yeah, no, I'll just get up. <laughs> Fully transversible, all levels of this house, minus the stairs. I can just, I quit doing that. This, this chair's very much locked in. Uh, if you want to be super cool, we do have a fine upstanding cannibal wall back here. If you're wondering about these names, these are people who've picked up things for the studio being like little game sharks. You're like, Hey, we want to do some more advanced stuff and kind of just try to impress people and show off. Uh, we do have a zone for, it's like a wish list. I don't use it like a wish list. I don't even like calling it a wish list because it's stuff I'm going to be buying anyway for the studio. That's like right on the same spot on the web zone. I'm still thinking about getting that ice giant pro siphon, but I don't, no, if mm -hmm. I really want it, I don't know if I trust it. It's all boring <laughs> stuff. Go to Pedro's, uh, check out what Pedro has. Everything I have is boring studio stuff. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I need someone uh, to um, get Ven that ice giant. No. <laughs> and write something about how it looks like a uppercase T. See, Please. here's the, here's the <laughs> problem with the ice giant. No one's going to get any satisfaction from that because there's no moving parts. I mean, it's just put... <laughs> Put it on, pop it on, pop it off. And uh, yeah, I have a ginormous case, so it's not going to be a size issue. <laughs> Ooh, ask Ven to make a video out of it. <laughs> How am I going to do that when I need to see? I don't have my HD uh, black magic thing. If I had that, I could. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, like I said, no one worry about that cooler. We're good. Also, it's starting to cool off. Like I said, it was only 32 degrees today when I started. Uh, we do have one slice of pie this week. Yes. That'd be lazy. It be was a, the I, one. I, I would be upset because if somebody gave me that, I'm like, what, are, what, 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 what do I need to roll it up and eat it? Can't you cut it? <laughs> to be fair, I've done that. <laughs> Just roll up the entire pizza and chomp away at it. Gonna... It's like a pita at that point. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason he's gonna die before me. It's um... <laughs> it won't be trauma related unless it's a trauma related pizza rolling incident. 
gastrointestinal trauma. Yes, mm. <laughs> quite possibly. But yes, this uh, this is a like the only bit of a uh, pie news that I saw this week that was even remotely interesting. Uh, it's a new hat. This one, um, all it does is it basically adds um, precision the precision time protocol to the pie. It it's a real time hat. <laughs> so you can have your IEEE 1588 uh, compatibility directly off of a Pi. Now, if you're uh, on the internet watching this or listening to this right now, uh, you're probably going, why would I need that? Mm-hmm. This is for that person who went somewhere with Wi-Fi, downloaded the podcast, and is now listening to it because they don't have internet at home, but they would like to be able to accurately keep time. This stuff. Unfortunately... And this is the bit that annoys me the most, uh, is that the um, real time hat by InnoRoute is um, quote only. If you'd like to, uh, yeah, if you'd like to get a pricing on that, you you have to ask them for a quote, which is never a good sign. N- never a good sign. Yes, it is. Sometimes <laughs> it means it's negotiable. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, and. Maybe you'll get lucky and the person on the other side of the email will be in a good mood and will go, oh, you only want the one? That's cool. Here's a price. But most of the time you'll get, no, a minimum order is 10. You know what? <laughs> I'm One guaranteed way for me not to order your product, uh, to Pedro's point, is, yes, um, inquire for pricing. Because my brain immediately reads it as like, you can afford it, peasant. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, there's a minimum order? Right. Goodbye, because... Just let people buy the stuff that you make. What is your here's the fear thing. of money? Here's the thing. You might need a certain <laughs> amount of orders to justify doing a run of it. Fair. And, you know, but that, that the, wasn't a render. That was an actual picture on the article. So. Yeah, I mean, making a couple of one-offs, man, getting five boards is pretty cheap. But, like, <laughs> if I'm looking at, like, cost of scale and I want to make something semi-affordable for people, I need to know what the interest is so I can, like, adjust the order in parts per piece. This, this is like the whole supply side. Pedro doesn't know anything about. <laughs> no, I am very much on the consumer side, even at work. <laughs> procurement, but like endpoint procurement. Procurement. He just thieves <laughs> stuff all day. They call him procurement. <laughs> I haven't stolen anything from work in ever since I took ever. this pen. Ever. <laughs> no, I need to find the pen. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> there you go. There's the pen I stole from work. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to be laughing about this in like two weeks when somebody like, contacts the NHS, like anti-theft department. <laughs> uh, I guess who also manages the uh, governance side of things for the East of England? <laughs> the criminal? Yeah. That is Pedro Mateus. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, that's the pen. I guess I do have my work laptop here, but I kind of need that to access it, the Active pen came directory with a laptop. because Windows. anybody that's watching this, it's, it's a combo <laughs> pack they send out from the NHS. So, if you would like to tell us uh, your adventures from thieving from work, you can do that over at LinuxGameCast.com. Tap the, the contact button. Pick a topic. You know, we got the show LWDW. We got LGC Weekly. We got reviews. If you're sending in some game keys, you got some let's talk. Hey, you want to be on the show? We're down with that. Maybe you got a cool project. You got other. Others the thing. That's a general yes. catch-all. I had a uh, uh, somebody from System Seventy Six uh, Documentation Department yesterday. I was like, "Hey, how do you get in touch with Ven?" Because they were going through another <laughs> System Seventy Six employee that's uh, one of our patrons, and they were playing telephone. I'm like, really? Hey, somebody's trying to call me. It's the NHS, Pedro. <laughs> Speaking of telephones, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Um, Basically, if you want to get in touch with us, that's the best way to do it. You can risk the comments. You can risk uh, trying to find us on Twitter. It's from you Arizona. Can... I didn't know. Arizona. Yeah, I don't know anyone. <laughs> I don't in know Arizona. anyone in Arizona. It, okay. Do you know anyone in Arizona? <laughs> if your mobile rings in 2021, you immediately like that's somebody that doesn't know me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a text message. Well, my mom texts. My mom. <laughs> My mom still rings me. Hi, mm. mom. <laughs> I don't know if she watches. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, you're, you're going to get that constant. Like, Quit stealing from work, Pedro. I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the one pen. 
<laughs> Either that or just gonna be like, can you get me a pen? <laughs> it is a nice pen. That that's part of the reason why I put it in the backpack. <laughs> uh, we do enjoy your feedback and that's the best way to do it. And it's that's where I'm gonna send anyone. You can have reply me on Twitter. Just like if you're an IRC, our IRC's bridge to the live section of our Discord. Just at me in there and I'll I'll see it, man. You know, I can, we can get back, we can communicate through that. Or same way with Pedro. Mm, it, it works. It's like unaccounted squiggly yeah. upside down thirteen something form. It'll work. Just unaccounted F O U R. <laughs> or on Discord, you do have to figure out how to put the upside down T. Mm. Good luck. I know the ASCII code for that. <laughs> I'm easy to find. I'm just Vin. I'm the only person on the internet named Vin, apparently. So yeah. <laughs> What about the diagram fella? Well, I guess he's not alive anymore, so it doesn't count. Named after him. (laughs) Not even making that up. Uh, All right. So Uh, your mom was a massive nerd. Gotcha. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? (laughs) Engineers, nerds, what? No. Who did this come from, Pedro? I'm not going to take a stab at that. Let's see. Um, this was uh, Good Mother Thor Carlson. Ah, yes. Ah, that one. <laughs> they write in for you. And I guess not for us, but more like a units of rock measurement yes. spacey stuff. Uh, hello, guys. I'm planning on building a workstation for music recording. Yeah, we get these because I do the interface and Linux thing. Uh, I just bought myself a Millennium 19 inch 8U rack. Now, the problem of buying a rack, everyone, there's a very real problem. They come with empty slots. Hmm. <laughs> this, this is a talk with your children about the empty slots in the rack because you're like, man, I need to put something in there, man. I got some space. What would look good in there? And uh, now, uh, what do we say? Uh, I want to use the parts from this pre build and house it in a rack mount case, preferably a 4U server case. Is this a smart idea or is it overkill? There was a link. To the R9 Vin Slutter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that second, man. <laughs> I, I mean, that, I just read the name. It's 225 kroner. So, uh, yeah. Vin Sluturnin. Why does that sound Finnish? <laughs> the kroners? Swedish, you mean? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, close enough, I guess. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm going to get so much hate for that one. <laughs> I'm about to say, I think at this point you've lived in Europe longer than I have. <laughs> you think geography is limited to North Americans? 35 years. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm um, just looking at the box. Now here's the thing. I wanted to bring this up just in case uh, my brothers and sisters out there thinking about putting a PC in the rack because when you're thinking about like a 19 inch rack it's kind of difficult to do because pretty much any audio rack any like I have you know this has got like a tilt on it so and I mean it's loaded I probably got 20 different things in here this is not a PC rack so you only have the front to bear the load you don't have rails They don't exist. There's nothing to hook onto the back. So you're putting all that weight. You might be able to get away with it if you have um, like a 4U box. Because I'll tell you right now, I do. On the bottom of this rack. Thanks, Aldias. Uh, Aldias (laughs) picked up uh, an APC. That is a 1U. It's got the batteries in it. It's not terribly long. I do a little bit of research for I throw something up on the uh, wish list. And I have something else under it to help balance that load up because you think video cards droop Mm -hmm. just with those four (laughs) bolts up front. And I mean, this is a big, chunky, cold rolled steel rack. This isn't the AliExpress rack. This thing was made in Canada, which means it wasn't very aligned and I had to modify it. It wasn't very precise in the measurement. So I had to throw some water. Look, it was straight in the cold. (laughs) <laughs> you brought it up to the heat. I, I, I got it. Once, it, once it was up to room temperature, it deformed a little bit. Um, yes. So I'm going to say I, I like the idea. I originally had that thought just to save space, you know, floor space, keep everything lined up. It's not the way you want to do it because I think like StarTech is the only company that makes um, like two and four U blanks that you could 
get in a regular music 19 inch rack without any back support. They're expensive and they're really bad cases. That's like the two problems with that. And uh, you'll probably end up having to get a custom power supply for it. Not custom, but different than what you normally do with. Do what I do. I can put Jackbox or DAW server anywhere. It can be next to me. It can be on the other side of the house. It can be downstairs. It can be 1.8 kilometers away and run at the same speed that it currently does. Like all this display stuff over here at UHD too. That's coming over fiber optics. And guess what? Fiber optics, cheap. You can do it over 10 gig network, but if you want a 10 gig ether doodle, you're going to have to spend tons of money for, um, like the switches are still incredibly bad expensive. Then you have to get the cards, which are like a hundred dollars a piece. I did this for $2 and a taco kids. And what you do is you SSH into the DAW. It's brilliant. Make it work for yourself. There's your pro tip. I see Katana's posting like a 12 view open. That's a lot of empty space you for you. put it at the bottom, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, if you get something with rails in it, but then again, this is, uh, this is, this is where I'm that like middleman guy because I speak both languages. The computer rack and your 19 inch audio racks, two different critters all together. Again, I, usually when I say no rails, people are like, oh, so there's nothing to screw into the back. Nothing. It just dangles in the front. Well, from the back. So, and it's also a depth issue. SSH it's, no, is the way but to go. He, if he wants to repurpose the um, the parts from that system, that's not a mini ITX system. That's a full size ATX motherboard. So, mm -hmm. you're not no. <laughs> no. What I'm saying is, build the box <laughs> that you want to build, and don't incur the extra expense. And you don't even need a switch or a router. You put a 10 gig card up here and put it in your basement wherever you want and wake on LAN and you're done. That's it. You can use NetJack. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> I might have I'm that sure that out. was part of the point unless he's got some other fancy proprietary system going on. Mm. <laughs> you can do his laptop. I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably that's uh, what um, they're using right now. It's just that uh, they're looking to buy a dedicated box to actually do it properly <laughs> and he was asking um is it overkill <laughs> and use the the pc that's irrelevant the rack that you have that's not gonna work <laughs> so you just dashed his dreams right there <laughs> you can get a star tech case for these 19 inch they these things exist they're just not very good racks again uh not racks but uh cases they're really bad if you want to see what a bad case looked like in like 97 Get one of those Star Trek uh, 19 inch. <laughs> like they technically have four screws and will go into a 19 inch rack. That's about the qualifications that those things have. Um, wouldn't necessarily trust them, but I mean, hey, if he wants to keep with the laptop, you can just buy a rack shelf. It's a Velcro, maybe. Yep. Yeah. That <laughs> or put it on the bottom <laughs> so that it has the support. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, either way, right back in. I want to see what you come up with. I am interested about that. But that's going to do it for this show. We've run long, so I'm going to queue up some music and we're going to roll some credits. How about that? Do I got a credits button? Uh, I do. <laughs> that sounds like a very, very nice time to thank all of you, especially uh, Gabe Matron. Thank you very much, our latest patron. Uh, everyone, this show, I keep saying this, but, uh, I, I think I need to remind myself more than anything. This was a, um, Patreon goal that you helped this meet, so thank you. It was thank a Tuesday. <laughs> and then it became Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> uh, you're... The, 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 I, I'm, I'm now noticing the text, um text what it, yes the text that effect of uh, changing colors <laughs> huh have you had a stroke like it's flickering what <laughs> let's make our bye-bye faces <laughs>